In this episode, we rack up more numbers for our big year, we see three owls in one place, Kaylee hobbles around on a stick, and we get a very special lifer. After a few hours on the road and only one diversion, we arrived at Boston in a travel lodge near Frampton Marsh. Hey folks, welcome back to Backyard Every Adventures. We're both here, <laughs> so no one's getting in trouble this time. Um, we have come to Lincolnshire. We're in a, a travel lodge again because the van's not fixed, but there should be some updates on that soon. Um, yeah, we're here. We're going to try and get as many species for our big year list, hopefully including lesser yellow legs which is an American visitor, and maybe some other special birds. So stick with us for this one. We woke up early. Good morning. Morning. It's very early. Uh, we got up probably a bit too early now, but we've ended up at Frampton Marsh, and it's still a bit dark. You can kind of see the sun coming up behind us. It's not quite it there yet. It looks lighter on the I know, it looks lighter on the phone than it actually is. <laughs> but um, we're, we're parked in the car park, and the field next to the car park is flooded and there's loads of birds on it. So we've got to wait until it gets a bit lighter and uh, check out what's there, get some new species. With it still being quite dark when we arrived, we watched the sun come up, listening to the raucous noise of waders and ducks. When we could finally see some birds, I got out of the car and was greeted by a hunting kestrel hovering over my head. Looking out onto the flooded field, there was loads of birds most numerous being lapwing, most roosting but some quite active flying about. Amongst the lapwing there were some waders feeding, running about in between the roosting lapwing with this group of rough. The kestrel that we saw first wasn't the only bird of prey. Another bird there, who happened to be a subscriber of ours, pointed out in the far distance a peregrine falcon sat on the roof of a barn. There were actually a pair present. There were a lot of ducks in front of us, most being widgeon and teal that were making all the noise. Also, there were quite a few shovelers as well, like this one that was preening by the bank. Also, a few small birds too, like this very showy pied wagtail that was feeding along the edges of the water, right in front of me. As I walked along the fence, there were some goldfinch feeding on some fallen teasel on the ground. And although there were all these great birds, the bird we were looking for, the lesser yellow legs, hadn't showed up yet. So we decided to have a little walk into the reserve to look round some of the hides. When I say walk, I was walking, Kaylee was hobbling. I had better tell you how she got her injury. Last time we were at Burton Mere Wetlands birding, she had a very dramatic fall and unfortunately now has ligament damage on one of her knees. But she's a trooper. Promise I'm not a klutz. <laughs> so when we arrived at the hide, we looked out onto the massive flock of lapwing that were in the air. We eventually settled and had a look out onto the scrape. Again there were ducks and waders, the first of the ducks being this female golden eye that was diving, and also this very handsome shell duck that was calling. The waders in front of us included Dunlin, this small group of this species were feeding amongst the lapwings. Also, there were small numbers of red shank, like this one that was feeding really close by. In the distance, Kaylee spotted a swan, which wasn't a mute swan, it was our winter visiting hooper swan. This one dozing on one of the banks in the water. We decided it was now time to go back to the field by the car park, in the hope that the yellow legs may have turned up. And on the way out of the car park, we spotted this group of starling, and on one of the pieces of water, a group of pot chard. And a little further down the path, as we were getting nearer to the visitor's centre, there was a female reed bunting sitting in a tree. As we were looking at the reed bunting, a shape flew over us and landed in the field. We walked over to see that it was a curlew. It had now landed and started feeding. By this time, we were quite near the car park, and one of the other birders came to tell us that the yellow legs was present. So we headed back. When we arrived, the yellow legs was really close, on the other side of the fence from the car park, only a few feet, feeding in the shallow flood water. 
it was very busy feeding and walking around. It didn't stay still for a moment. It was walking along the fence line, being followed by myself and other birders. This individual's a juvenile and a pretty rare American visitor. We saw it last time we were here, when it was equally as confiding. I would have watched it for longer, but it flew out of the reserve. Hey folks, it eventually got light and we saw some birds, <laughs> uh, including our yellow legs which is a really cool little wader that's uh, an American visitor, and it was stupid close, like in front of the car, a few feet in front of where we parked the car. So, um, excellent. And also we met one of our subscribers, Tom, uh, who watches our videos, who helped us find a peregrine falcon, which was at a distance on top, top of a barn, barn which was excellent. Um, it's only just after half past nine, so we've got some more birding to do today. We're going to go an hour away to... You I think also told us about where to go get the longer Oh, yeah. Dolls. We're going to go to a place called, I think, Eldenall, um, where there's some longer dolls, which Tom told us about. Thanks, mate. And there may even be crane there, which we're really hoping for. So one of the two would be excellent. Um, keep with us. We drove out of the car park and down the lane, and I stopped because I saw this field fair. Whilst I was photographing the field fair, Kaylee saw something in the field, hiding behind some mud. It was the yellow legs. She'd re-found it. I tried to get some footage of it, but initially it was hiding. Soon enough, it came out a little into the open when more birders turned up. I tried to point out where it was based on where this pheasant was stood. Eventually, the yellow legs came out of its hiding place and started walking around feeding. Not the first bird you'd expect to see wandering around a sprout field, but we were super happy to get more views of it. What a bird. What did we just find again? We found the lesser yellow legs, <laughs> well, Kaylee found the lesser yellow legs again in a sprout field. <laughs> I stopped to have a look at a field fair who needed what I needed for the year tick and um, yeah, Kaylee's what the yellow legs again. Excellent. One of the birders here spotted a bird in the tree, which turned out to be a brambling. This is a great finch for our year list. But now it was time to head to our next destination. Hey folks, we've arrived and it's very, very busy. There's lots of other cars here and apparently there may be a few owls that we might tick off our list today. Keep with us. When we arrived, there were lots of other birders along a bank. There was water at one side and a hedgerow at the other. When we arrived at the first group of people on the bank, they were looking into the hedgerow at a couple of short-eared owls that were roosting in there. The birds, although a little hidden, were on show enough to identify and were amazing to see. A little further up the path, there were some roosting long-eared owls. A little further into the vegetation, there were two, one low and one high. This one's the one that was low. And then we were told further up the path, there was yet another species of owl. This was the tawny owl. This one was in a hole in a tree. Unfortunately, some of this footage is shaky because it was very windy, but a real treat to top off our trio of owls. On the way back, I had another look at the long-eared owl as someone had found another one that was more out in the open. By this point, we were both pretty bowled away by how amazing this place was. It got even better as a red kite flew really close over and started hunting along the banks of the water. Really pleased with what we'd seen, we headed back looking along the water, seeing this meadow pipit feeding, and looking out into the water and seeing this group of lapwings. When we got back to the car park, there was a gentleman with a scope looking over in the distance, and he'd found a lifer for us, the common crane. There were three really far in the distance, so I set about walking along the bank to see if I could get a better view. It was quite a walk, but when I arrived, I got reasonable views of the crane. It was very windy and at quite a distance, so the footage is a bit shaky, but I felt extremely privileged to be able to see these birds. We'd missed them once in the past, but got them today. What a result. Well, that was a resounding success. Um, not only have we seen long-eared owl, short-eared owl, and tawny owl, uh, we just got a lifer in the way of cranes. Common cranes, which we've tried to get in the past and failed. 
Longyear Dowl is the life of me. Longyear Dowl is the life of Kaylee. Woo! Oh, what a day. It's, uh, yeah, we can't ask for much more. This place is absolutely incredible. Everybody is friendly. Yeah, everyone's lovely here. People have been helping us out, seeing things. What a, what a place. What an amazing day. Right, I don't know where we're going next. We've got a couple of hours left, so, uh, yeah, stay with us, see what we find. Where are we going? Ah, hey folks. Um, we've had an excellent day so far, but now we're heading to possibly our last twitch of the day, which is Deeping Lakes, where there's been a glossy ibis seen today, which will be a great bird to add to our list. Hey folks, we're at Deeping Lakes. There's Kaylee. Um, looking for a glossy ibis. Fingers crossed we'll find one. Apparently there's more long-eared owls here, so we may even see two in a day. We arrived at Deeping Lakes and started walking around trying to find the glossy ibis. When we got to where it had been seen, which was at the first hide, there was no sign. We scanned through the black-headed gulls and a few of the ducks and geese. I did pick out this one Egyptian goose that was amongst them, which was quite cool to see, but still no sign. We sat about walking around the lake and came to the first hide and picked out, guess what? Another roosting long eared owl. This one was well hidden in the ivy with only its back showing. After chatting to one of the locals, he pointed out where the glossy ibis might be. So we walked along a track by a river. Unfortunately though, it wasn't there. There were a few little egrets and further along some geese but unfortunately no glossy ibis and as it was starting to go dark and we were getting hungry we headed back to the car hello folks we're scoffing pizza um, we've just uh, decided to get some dinner um, unfortunately we dipped on the glossy ibis although the reserve we went to was excellent um, we're off on a bit of a journey now up north west to uh, like Morecambe area so tomorrow we're going to be at Leighton Moss in the morning, hopefully getting some more birds for our big year. Stick with us, see you in the morning. We woke up and headed towards RSPB Leighton Moss. Morning folks. Morning! <laughs> we're at RSPB Leighton Moss, it's reasonably early. Um, we're here to find a few birds, some hopeful, some maybe just by chance let's see there's some quite a lot of birds around us already and um, we're looking for Kaylee's favorite duck the ring neck duck <laughs> she doesn't like it that much we no, failed it well not really it's <laughs> just like we keep failing on them um, and possibly hopefully bearded tit marsh harrier well stick with us see what we find the first bird we saw as we walked onto the path was this wonderful tree creeper that was going up and down trees but to get to our target, which was the ring-necked duck, we headed towards the first hide, which is called Lillian's Hide. When we arrived, we looked out upon the big stretch of water. Close to us, there were some ducks, a few of the normal suspects like teal and this lovely shoveler that was preening. But we had to look further out, scanning through the many tufted duck to find one that looked a bit different, searching for the ring-necked duck. Kay found it pretty quickly. Here it is, looking a little bit like a female tufted duck, but with no crest at the back and quite a pale base to the bill. Also, if you look carefully, it's almost got a little white spectacle. This was great to see, and the third one we've seen in the UK. These American ducks are becoming more numerous in this country. Whilst we were there, another birder in the hide pointed out this lovely male marsh harrier that was flying low over the reeds at the back of the pool. This majestic bird of prey has a stronghold here at Leighton Moss and I've seen this bird here on a few occasions. It's always a pleasure to see. Also, close to us, it wasn't just ducks. There was a small group of snipe. They were quite camouflaged but when we picked them out, they were easy to see and gave us great views. We moved then to the next hide, but there wasn't much there, only really tufted ducks. On the way back, there was this extremely tame robin, that if we had some food, I'm sure it would be eating out of our hand. 
What have you got there, Nigel? What a little robin. <laughs> can you see him? You can see him. Mm. How friendly are you? But now we decided it was time to move on, so we headed to the car park seeing the singing song thrush en route. Hey folks, we've just been to Leighton Moss, we picked up a couple of birds, we pretty sure we got the ring that duck, and um, we definitely got Marsh Harrier, so that's excellent. We're scoffing crisps, because <laughs> um, we're hungry. We're on our way now to a possible glossy ibis, because we dipped on that one okay. yesterday, so um, see if we can get that one. Stick with us, let's go. Upon arriving at Middleton, the glossy ibis was obvious in a horse paddock, but it flew off as soon as we arrived and landed in an adjacent field. I found a footpath by a football field and wandered along it to try and get views, seeing these jackdaws en route. Eventually hitting the corner of a field, I saw it in the distance, feeding on a little bit of flood water. This was a glossy ibis. These birds, although rare, are sporadic but regular visitors and have had one successful breeding attempt in the UK. As the numbers of these birds increase every year, I hope there'll be more breeding attempts as these are beautiful birds to see. With the excitement of seeing this bird, I ran back through the muddy field to the car. Hey folks, I'm a bit steamed up because it's cold outside and... I'm very out of breath. And I'm very out of breath because I just ran. But um, we got here and the glossy ibis was in the field right by the road. As soon as we parked up, it flew away. Um, but I managed to relocate it briefly and got some footage before it relocated again. So great, um, on to the next thing. The next stop was not end on sea. Say hello. Hello. Hello, we're at not end on sea. Uh, just come to see some twight. Get those ticked off this, uh, this year's list. When we arrived, it didn't take too long to track down the twight. There were a group of them jumping around on the causeway, eating and picking up grit. I watched them for a couple of minutes until, unfortunately, they were spooked by some cyclists. They flew off and disappeared for a while, but eventually they reappeared, flying around in a small flock. Eventually a few of them landed on the cafe roof by the car park. Where are we going? Hi folks, uh, another successful day with this morning at Leighton Moss, then we picked up a glossy ibis and then some twite. So that's excellent. We're now on our kind of last chance bird of the day, which is a black red star, which is on the North Wales coast. So we're heading there now. Join us. We decided on one last hurrah, which meant driving all the way to Rill on the North Wales coast. We arrived at Rill Harbour to a little bit that's called Horton's Nose, where the black red star had been seen. We wandered along, only seeing the starling, and from the beach, some oyster catchers. As I walked back, looking over at the other side, there was a pontoon with some turnstone roosting, but unfortunately, no black red start. To be honest though, with the weekend we'd had, we couldn't complain. Hey folks, unfortunately we dipped on the black red start. It's becoming a booby bird. Aren't it? it is really <laughs> becoming a booby bird. It's not actually that far from where we live, it's only about 40 minutes, so we're gonna try and come back uh, soon, hopefully. Um, in the meantime, we've had a, just an absolutely stunningly amazing weekend. Uh, we've seen almost all the birds that we've gone for, plus extras. It's It's been crazy cool. Um, yeah, hope you enjoyed it. Please like. Please subscribe. And please press the notification bell. See you next time. Bye. Bye-bye.